You might have seen our video a couple of weeks ago all about the new update to Lightroom Classic where we went over things like masking and healing and all that kind of stuff. There's loads of stuff in there, really interesting. But I wanna show you today just how easy it is to edit a portrait photo in Lightroom. The workflow now, oh, is so easy, so quick. It takes away a lot of the busy work, gets rid of all the sort of fussy little bits you have to do, and lets you get on with the creative process. Let's talk about it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new <laughs> photography tutorial. This week, like I said in the intro, we're diving into Lightroom Classic. I want to show you just how easy it is now to edit a portrait photo and how quick that workflow is. This is perfect for anyone who does maybe headshots, wedding photos, anything with people in. You know, whether you're doing a, a fully lit portrait or whether you're doing more of a candid shot. Let's dive in. Let's stop talking about it without showing it. So let's go and talk about it while showing it. I'm going to use this photo here. This was taken on the A7R5. I have done a little basic kind of edit to it. I've just flattened the light quite a bit because it's a little bit harsh on my face. That's pretty much it. Just a little bit of reduction in highlights, a bit of reduction in contrast and so on. You get the idea. We're going to dive into masking so I can show you exactly how easy it is to actually make this portrait look exactly the way that I would want it to look. Now, just a quick tip before we get into that. Most of the work, certainly the bulk of the work, is done before you even get into the editing software. Right, the lighting needs to be good, that's going to make it nice and sharp, and that's going to really accentuate your subject. In this photo, for example, I've very deliberately chosen a very dark background. There's a bit of colour there, because I like to splash in a bit of colour where I can, using these lights behind me. But, it's a dark background, I'm lit in the photo so that I'm the brightest part of the, the actual photo, which means I'm the I'm easily the subject. It kind of differentiates me from the background. That's a nice easy trick to actually uh, get a nice looking portrait like that. And I'm just using one light. It's 45 degrees, so it's above and to the side, coming down to my face there. I'm trying to go for that kind of Rembrandt lighting. I've missed it just a tiny amount because it's not over my eye properly. My dark, One of the eyes is in darkness, but yeah, we can fix that. It's not a problem. Let's get into exactly how we will approach this. So like I say, global edit done, nothing major, just some basic little edits to actually soften the light. If I was to press the actual backslash key here on my keyboard, you can see this is how the photo started and this is where it is now. So you can see the main thing I've done there is just tone down that light. I've done that via a combination of using the highlights slider here, bring that down and then using the tone curve as well. So before and after, you can also press Y to see before and after side by side, and then press it again to go back. Nice and easy, nice and useful as well. Now we're gonna go into the masking panel. So as you may have seen, if you've watched our video about the Lightroom update, there's now the edit panel here, which is the kind of default panel you'd be in with all your sliders. We're gonna go over to our masking panel, and you can see there's a few different options here for how we want to add a mask. This is a lot easier than it used to be, just because we don't have to go down the route of a radial gradient. You know, we can select me as a person here. We can select subject, we can do background. There's a lot. So the way that I would have done this in the past is I would have gone in, I would have selected a radial gradient. I would have drawn that straight over my face here like this, and I would have bumped the exposure up. That's the first thing that I would have done. I probably then would have gone in with a brush and brushed in some different exposure and then minus exposure and try and dodge and burn a little bit that way. And that's great, but it can take a little bit of time. Let's delete that mask. I'm gonna show you there's a couple of ways now that's really easy to do this. First of all, Lightroom has a few different options for how you want to mask using AI. So for example, we could click subject here and that's gonna immediately mask out me as a subject. You can see Lightroom just puts the red overlay to show you what it's masked out. I hadn't, didn't have to do anything there. So I could do that and I could just bump up the exposure that way. That's gonna separate me from the background again. Let's delete that mask because we can also select me as a person. So let's click that. And if I click that, you can see there are lots of different options for how I want to mask myself. I can mask myself as an entire person, so the subject there, or I can mask out individual parts of me as a person. And if there's multiple people in the scene, Lightroom will allow you to pick different people as well. So for example, here I could click face skin. If I click that, I'm gonna be able to make a mask just where that red area is, that's the skin on my face. I could also go for a separate mask for the skin on my body. I could go for the whites of my eyes, the iris and pupil, and I could go lips, teeth, and hair. 
I'm gonna leave those. But if I create the mask, you see here there's a little tick box to create three separate masks. So I've got the face skin, the whites of my eyes, and the iris and the pupil. Let's click create mask. And what is essentially gonna happen now is there's three different masks available to me. Mask one is the face skin. Mask two is gonna be the whites of the eyes. Mask three is going to be the iris and the pupil. So with mask one selected, which is the skin just on my face, I could now brighten that using the exposure. And it's very much doing a very, a very similar job to what the radial gradient was doing originally. But I didn't have to draw anything on. I don't have to worry about a halo effect around me. That's something that can happen with a radial gradient. You know, the brightness can spill out over the face. I don't have to worry about any of that. I can come up to mask two. This is the whites of the eyes. And I could just bump that exposure up a little bit. And I can come up here to the actual iris and pupil. And I can bump this exposure up. I could bump the clarity up. I could bump the saturation up if I want to make sure it's nice and colorful. Maybe I'll even bump the exposure up a little bit more. And we've done that incredibly quickly. I've probably gone over the top here, but we've done that super fast. But let's get rid of these. So let's delete all masks again, because that's not even the only way that we could now approach this. And what I would probably do is a combination of that, a radial gradient and a brush. So I still use those other masking options, those sort of more manual masking options, but it's a much quicker way of just getting those irises, you just click it, done. Just getting the subject, click it, done. But what about if we wanna go even one step further? Well, over on the left here, we have our presets that we can use to edit our photo. Now, you might not like presets too much, but there are some interesting new ones, which are adaptive presets. These are gonna be different for every photo you apply them to because they're gonna use these AI masks. So you can see we've got adaptive portrait, we've got adaptive sky, adaptive subject. That means that you can actually go in, essentially mask out those areas and already apply a preset to those masked areas. So for example, with the adaptive portrait, we could just mouse over enhance portrait. Lightroom, I'm gonna click it. Lightroom is going to establish different parts of the portrait and make some adjustments based on that. So you can see it's made a mask for the face skin, the whites of the eyes, the iris and the pupil and the teeth. Now there's no teeth showing here, so that one won't be doing anything. But if I turn these masks off and then back on, I'll be honest with you, that's a, pretty, uh, that's a pretty subtle effect, but we can actually go in and then manually change that. If I was to click the face skin, for example, you can see it's softened it here by bringing down the texture and the clarity, and I could also brighten it a touch as well. Let's go into the whites of the eyes, where you can see it's just brought down the saturation just to make sure it's nice and, and white, and it's brightened it a little bit. We could brighten it a little bit more go into the iris and pupil, you can see it's brightened it, it's brought the clarity up, we could brighten that a little bit more as well. It's also brought the saturation up, so it's done a lot of the things we just did actually. But it's done it in one click, right? So we've added four masks there that Lightroom has, has actually picked out itself, it's masked it itself, and it's made those adjustments by itself. One click and all of that is done. And we can go in and tune it and tweak it a little bit but it has done a lot of the work for us. Let's get rid of all those masks because we can also come over here to the left. There's lots of individual things we can do. Let's go for, for example, enhance eyes. That's just going to affect the whites of the eyes and the iris and the pupil. We could go for a gritty portrait. You can see that makes an immediate difference. It's upping things like the texture and the clarity on my skin. Not particularly flattering in this case, but you know something we could do. We could go for a glamour portrait. That is going to do the opposite. It's going to soften that skin. Great for maybe fashion, maybe makeup, something like that. There's a lot that you can do just by mousing over these and it'll apply that automatically. So let's actually edit this photo, this portrait using these masks. Let's actually go through it and do it. We're first of all going to click Enhance Portrait over here. It's an adaptive portrait because it essentially is going to add all of the things that I would have added anyway. So brightening the face skin, brightening the whites of the eyes a little bit and also desaturating them and then adding saturation, clarity, and exposure to the iris and the pupil. I was gonna do all that anyway. So it's good that in one click, I can actually do all of that immediately. I could go in and tune it, I could go in and tweak it. I don't necessarily feel the need to. We haven't got any teeth in this photo, so I'm gonna click delete the teeth mask, and I'm gonna create a new mask. Let's go radial gradient, which we're then gonna draw over my face here. It's a nice soft, you know, feather is at 100, 
and I just want to make sure it's not going to spill out. And I'm just going to use the exposure to brighten that a little bit. We can then go create new mask. Let's go brush. And I'm going to just bring the exposure down on this. And I'm just going to darken around the edge of my face here, just where the shadow is. I'm just going to draw this on. If you're unsure where you've drawn on, you can press O to see exactly what's happening there with the mask that you're drawing. I just want to darken that side a little bit. Let's press O to remove that. Lovely. And then let's create one more mask, the brush, which we're going to just bump up the exposure a little bit. I'm just going to draw that over, or paint it, I suppose, or brush it. I'm going to do that over my eye here, which is in shadow. I'm just going to bring up the exposure a little bit there to try and bring that out of shadow just enough. Something like that, I think, is probably great. We can turn off all the masks by just clicking this little toggle up here. So let's turn them all off. That's what it was like without the masks. That's what it's like with the mask. So a nice bit of brightening there. I think that looks really good. Let's go back to the normal sort of edit panel here. Let's press the backslash key. This is how the photo looked out of camera. This is where we've got it to. So you can see how much extra detail we've got in the eyes. We've sorted the lighting a little bit. We've softened that. We've just brightened my face. We've separated me better from the background as well. And I'm really happy with it. That is how easy it is and how quick it is to actually edit a portrait in Lightroom. I don't feel the need to go into Photoshop now because there's not work. I mean, yes, I suppose if I was cleaning something up, like removing something from the background or something like that, I probably would still do that in Photoshop. But with the new healing tools, actually, you could do that in Lightroom as well. So there's a lot that you can do in Lightroom, nice and easy. But I love it. I really love this new update. I feel like the masking is just getting better and better and better. And it makes it so easy to edit photos the way you want to edit them. We've done videos in the past all about masking and how that really is the way to spice up your photos. And I just feel with these new updates, it's just so easy. So of course, we have links to all of the products used for this photo, this video, everything down in the description. So you can go and check that out for yourself. Of course, if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for new tutorials, reviews, all that kind of stuff all the time. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.